oxygen vent hood, the beanie cap is slowly being retracted away from the top of the external tank. Close the mock visors and initiate O2 flow. Top down work. Orbiter test conductor John Craxon requesting pilot Eric Bow clear the caution and warning memory system. T minus two minutes and counting. GLS is go for ET, LH2, plus six. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is being terminated as planned. T minus one minute, 30 seconds and counting. All systems are go. About 90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery on her final mission. T minus one minute, 10 seconds and counting. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is now at the proper flight pressure. T minus one minute and counting. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. T minus 48 seconds and we're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running on its uh, three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start at T minus 31 seconds. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. The sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy waves. Go for main engine start. Two, one, booster ignition, and the final liftoff of Discovery. A tribute to the dedication, hard work, and pride of America's space shuttle team. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Discovery now making one last reach for the stars. Steve Lindsay acknowledging the call from Capcom Charlie Hova as Discovery's three main engines throttle back up. Lindsay is joined on the flight deck by pilot Eric Bowen, mission specialist Al Drew, and Nicole Stott. Mission specialist Mike Barrett and Steve Bowen. Discovery's three main engines are burning fuel at a rate that would drain an average swimming pool in about 25 seconds. The engines combined with the solid rocket boosters produce more than 7 million pounds of thrust. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, we're standing by for separation of the twin solid rocket boosters. Discovery now traveling 2,695 miles an hour. It's altitude 24 miles, downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 29 miles. Booster separation confirmed. Discovery's guidance is now converging as the shuttle's onboard computers fine-tune the flight. Two minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling 3,189 miles an hour. It's altitude 37 miles, downrange of the Kennedy Space Center 53 miles. Discovery's engines are now swiveling to roll the shuttle to a heads-up position to get better communication with NASA's tracking satellites. Discovery, your single engine, Zaragoza 104. Single engine, Zaragoza 104. Internal tank separation confirmed. We saw a nominal Miko Ohms 1 not required. Preliminary TIG for Ohms 2 3730. Welcome to you and your veteran crew back to space. Copy, uh, no Ohms 1 required. 3730 preliminary TIG, and uh, thanks a lot. Good to be here. Good deal, panel. We'll meet you in the post Ohms 1 tab. Main engine cutoff confirmed. Space shuttle discovery now in space.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos and welcome to another episode. I'm going to try to make this part of the video quick and efficient because I'm all out of time. It's already midnight and I'm trying to get this out tonight because I will not have any time at all starting uh, starting Sunday all the way through the next week. I might have to might have to make a small little video of another video game or something of that nature. I was looking at Planet Base. Planet Base looks cool, but who knows? We'll see. But right now, let's get the flight plan going so you know how to fly this beautiful, beautiful machine. Well, my creation or a failed attempt, I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this recreation. Uh, uh, being my own worst, worst skeptic or worst uh, critic, actually. Um, there's a lot of things I would have changed, but I don't have any time, so... You know, it's, it's, uh, it'll work, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, but, um, yeah, Discovery, Space Shuttle Discovery. I think it was back in 2011. Uh, she flew for the last time, and she came back down, and uh, they went ahead and decommissioned her, and now she's in a museum, so, I don't know. The shuttle era is gone, or is it? Who knows? I know, uh... I know they're working on maybe the world's first SSTO here pretty soon, but we will see. We will see. All right. Well, anyway, uh, inside the cargo bay is just a dud or a dummy probe. There, I don't really know just how much this thing can carry up into space. I have no idea. So you, you guys are going to have to figure that out for yourselves the hard way or the explosive way, as I like to call it. Um, inside the fairing, it's actually quite uh, different. It's kind of, um, I put all the fuel, most of the fuel on the very top. That way I could angle the actual engines towards that center of mass that's up there. Because KSP doesn't, as of yet, have engines that are like the space shuttles. Be able to turn around and do all kinds of maneuvers. So you kind of have to... You kind of have to be creative with this when you're making a replica of the space shuttle. Now, if you want to go ahead and attach things outside of a fairing, build your fairing first. And then, not using any symmetry whatsoever, go ahead and attach whatever is outside of that fairing. No, you cannot use symmetry. I've tried. It doesn't work very well. So you have to do it one at a time. One painstakingly at a time. Now, the thing about this craft that took so long and such a headache and heartache to build was the fact that I didn't use any outward fins for control, you know, nothing extra. There wasn't any reaction wheels whatsoever. The reaction wheels of the cockpit as well as the probe body that's inside are all turned off. This whole thing is designed to work through weight and thrust and drag and everything else just like the actual space shuttle because reaction wheels while they sound great in game um, we have something like that in real life but nothing like you know, nothing like in KSP and the space shuttle uh, space shuttle doesn't use reaction wheels from my from what I know you, that it doesn't have reaction wheels it uses thrusters and you know vectoring and aerodynamics and all sort of good stuff um, so I tried to replicate that true to its form and boy a lot of pain a lot of pain I've actually been working on this shuttlecraft for a few weeks now it's been like a pet project in the back burner but I finally got it up and running um, but even then even then this shuttle is for experienced experienced veteran players only if you're new to KSP if you're a novice if you have no clue on how to fly things this might not be the greatest craft for you <laughs> now even though this is for advanced pilots only I tried to make it as easy as possible all you have to do is hit the space bar once to have a little bit of sparks and everything just like the real thing and of course twice in order to actually do the launch Immediately make sure that you are dead on the center of your gimbal, right there, your nav ball, before you hold down the E key and do a roll. Uh, do a barrel roll. No, do a roll. And um, once you get to that, just 
just you need you're gonna need to practice because without any reaction wheels whatsoever it is tricky i usually hold down the e key until i'm just about just about level and then i let it go and it keeps on rolling before it finally slows down and stops so definitely definitely a uh, challenge to fly now if you've done everything right at the very first couple of seconds during the roll and you've lined it up right just let it go and it won't need your attention until it's time to separate the boosters now the boosters will explode if you don't release them just right your craft has to be pointing very close to your prograde and you have to be at least under 800 meters per second or about 800 meters per second if you don't they will rip apart for some reason whether it's drag wind or just they shutter too hard or whatever the case may be but yeah it, it takes some it takes practice Now at this point you want to go ahead and try to grab your W and S key and bring your angle of attack towards your prograde and try to just kind of coax it downwards, you know, to try to get a, a more level prograde. Now don't try to go left or right or else you're going to lose the whole thing in two seconds. Now here's where it gets really fun. <laughs> or should I say really, really, really tricky. You're going to want to have enough time ahead of you before you reach the apoapsis in order to do this little little maneuver. You're going to have to disconnect from your fuel tank. Hopefully you've used everything up. And then you're going to have to use the one key to turn off the top engine out of the three engines that are on the back of the shuttlecraft, minus the two smaller ones that are near the tail. And then go down to the two uh, engines on the bottom of the shuttlecraft and bring them down to anywhere between 30 to 35 uh, thrust. Bring them both down to either between 30 or 35 thrust. Now, make sure you turn that top engine off with the one key because with the two tail engines on and the two bottom engines at low thrust, you'll then be able to move forward and complete the burn into orbit. Try to do this on time though, because if you go past your apoapsis, you're going to burn up a whole lot of fuel trying to get back to your apoapsis. Now, I realize that the shuttle does not do this at all, but being as KSP, you've got to be creative and think outside the box. Now, once you're all done deploying stuff, fueling up stuff, docking with stuff, and it's time to come home, try to get your prograde in your map view on the M key. Try to get your prograde down right on top of the KSC to about maybe 25 or 30,000 meters. You'll have to give or take or play around with it in order to get it perfect, but you really want to stop right on top of the KSC so that you can do a real sharp dive in order to keep your airspeed up before you actually land. It's not like an SSTO or an airplane. It's a flying brick. As all astronaut pilots know very well, shuttles are flying bricks. They don't fly, they fall with style. So yeah, about 25, 30,000 pro grade on top of the actual KSC. Now in order to do that, you're gonna have to go into your map view, whip around to the other side of the planet, burn retrograde until of course your pro grade comes right down on top of the KSC, about 25, 30,000 meters. Now before landing, go ahead and put your fuel into the farthest tank in the back of the craft. This will help stabilize it better during re-entry. Make sure when you actually start slamming into the thicker part of the atmosphere, around 50,000 meters or so, that you're tilted to about 20-25 degrees and you want to stay at about 20-25 degrees. Now in order to stay at 20-25 degrees, hit the F key. The F key will allow you to pitch your nose down just ever so slightly without losing complete control. Now you're really going to need your RCS during this descent, so let's hope you didn't use it all while you were up there. Haha. <laughs> But no, seriously, you're going to need it. Now in this tutorial, I actually undershoot. Uh, and so I have to make a type of emergency landing. So it gets pretty interesting. As you can see, when, once you hit the more thicker part of the atmosphere, 
it it tends to, it tends to become super nose heavy and no matter no matter what you do with the F key or the RCS it's going to go pro grade all the way down but thankfully because if if you've listened and you've uh, kept your nose up at about 25 degrees the entire way down um, you'll have slowed down enough to where the re-entry heat won't damage your craft too much to where you'll explode. Now realizing that I'm not going to make it over those mountains, I'm going to have to make an immediate U-turn and find a nice... <laughs> Well, let's just let's just face it. It's bumpier than hell down there, but try to find a nice landing spot near the mountains cuz if I use up too much of my fuel, the center of mass will go behind the center of lift or it'll get too close and it won't be able to control it too well. So, yeah. Emergency landing, people. Emergency landing. Yeah, right. That was just pure luck. Pure luck. Normally I'd be in the tree, but anyway, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for your continued support. I cannot stress enough how much <clears throat> I cannot stress enough how much that means to me. It, I re it's it, it helps me get through the day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am Veos. Signing off, and have a good night.